Okay, okay, everybody. Now we have to redirect our attention over to Chicago. Yes, Chicago. Because if you don't know, the mayor of Chicago, Brandon Johnson, has just announced that he will be ending the Shot Spotter program. This program was put in place so that um, if shots were detected in a neighborhood of Chicago, police would automatically be detected to the area and be alerted so that they could respond faster to the scene and react to what's going on. They thought that this would help uh, solve some things, uh, and people suggested that this did help in the community. While the Chicago Police Department said that it did not lead to any more significant arrests in the community, people across the community said that sh- um, shooting incidents did kind of decrease uh, due to the shot spotter situation um, being monitored in their community. So a lot of people wanted the shot spotter situation uh, program to continue. However, the, the state is facing a budget problem, man. They're facing a budget problem. And this is where the migrant um, coming into the country has impacted uh, this community. Because this shot spotter program is estimated to cost about $8 million a year annually. And right now, there seems to be a $70 million shortfall between what the mayor, Brandon Johnson, is suggesting is needed and what the governor is uh, outlining. So that is a discrepancy that I think Brandon Johnson is trying to fix. So that he's going to eliminate the shot spotter program to save money just so he could help the migrants. Tell me your thoughts. Now the migrant situation is impacting the budget in these communities. And maybe this is what Candace was talking about, man. I'm not too sure, but let me know your thoughts. Community keeps saying, why aren't the police coming out? Shot Spotter has given us that. We are glad that the mayor is moving us in a different direction. Mixed reactions to Mayor Brandon Johnson's decision not to renew the contract on the controversial shot spotter program. WGN's Jenna Barnes is joining us live tonight with more on this still developing story. Jenna. Yeah, Ray and Dina, Mayor Brandon Johnson campaigned on ending shot spotters. Some activists say it can lead to police violence, but there is pushback against the mayor's decision tonight. Some say he is taking away a life saving tool from police. We need this shot spotter. Tina Hammond lives in Inglewood and has the shot spotter gunfire detection system on her block. I'm not going to say it makes me feel 100% safe, but just knowing that there are other things besides me or my neighbor calling 911, I just think that's very important. She joined a news conference alongside some alders outside a senior living community, denouncing Mayor Brandon Johnson's decision to end Chicago's contract with the company behind shot spotter. Chicago has spent nearly $50 million on the technology since 2018. At this senior building, I would constantly get calls about shootings. When they implemented ShotSpotter, those calls went down. Mayor Johnson is fulfilling a campaign promise by ending the city's use of the controversial system. A 2021 MacArthur Justice Center report found nearly 9 in 10 police deployments did not lead to evidence of gun-related crime. Critics say shot spotter leads to over policing of marginalized communities. This is indeed a win for the city. We want to plan uh, neighborhood by neighborhood uh, with all our institutions, including the Chicago Police Department, on best practices to make sure that our communities are safer and stronger together. The city saying in a statement moving forward, the city of Chicago will deploy its resources on the most effective strategies and tactics proven to accelerate the current downward trend in violent crime. Police Superintendent Larry Snelling has said previously, shot spotter saves lives, allowing officers to get to scenes before anyone calls 911. We have documented just through giving officers awards for it, life-saving awards, you know, over 150 incidents where officers have applied tourniquets and life-saving techniques because they were able to get to that scene sooner. Shot spotters proponents calling on the mayor to reconsider his decision before police stop using the system September 22nd 
about a month after the Democratic National Convention. You want to wait until all the dignitaries come from around the country and then cancel ShotSpotter the month after they leave? What about the people that are here every single day? That should be your focus. Wow. You see it there. People are saying that, wow, it's pretty uh, timing for you to end this program a month after, after the de Democratic debate, okay? So give me your thoughts on the situation. Is the migrants uh, coming in and impacting budgets a problem now? Is it really hitting our communities now? And should people push back? Because we're seeing all across the country, if people have these council meetings, I mean, mayors and politicians, they're reacting. Trust me, they're pulling up and reacting, whether you be in, we see it in Denver, which we're going to take a look at um, a little bit later today. We see it in New York, which we're also going to take a look back. We have to get communities together and have some pushback, people, because people are realizing that their taxpayer dollars are being if, being impacted. And if you want to stand up, you can replace these politicians. So you have to go to these council meetings in your local uh, neighborhoods and get things done and affect change. This was Mayor Brandis Johnson uh, press conference to address the budget and the ending of ShotSpotter. So let's just take a look and hear a couple things from the mayor himself on his thoughts on ending the program and the impact of migrants uh, on the Chicago budget. You let me know your thoughts. To how we handle accusations of misconduct and that those accusations of misconduct should happen in the forefront, in the public, where people can actually witness it. And so, though there has been a very robust debate around this matter, the decision to keep a very transparent, open process is something that is important to the people of Chicago. So thank you all again for being here today. And with that, I'll take questions. and law enforcement, that having a open, transparent process will help do that. It's important, as we have seen over the course of at least these first 10 months that I've been in office, that we are working hard to really build and in some, some instances restore to that it was important for, for me to provide that type of runway. Let's see if we can get right into it. 70 million or so gap and what's needed. Does the city have plans to offer that $70 million? If so, how, what would that look like? Yeah. So as you know, I've made a very strong commitment. Well, maybe you don't know, I shouldn't assume that. I've made an incredible commitment to this mission. From the first major vote that I oversaw as mayor of the city of Chicago, $51 million. That was a punt from the previous city council. And then we put another $150 million into the budget for this fiscal year, something that the previous city council did not do. They didn't budget for, for the last year. And then we went back again for a third time to replace government operations funds with $95 million. On top of that, you know, we've had 35,000 plus people come to the city of Chicago seeking asylum, of which we had at one point the highest 15,000 people that the city of Chicago was solely responsible for sheltering. 5,700 children that we were educating, providing health screenings. 5,700 children that they have to put in the education system. 5,700 young new migrants that they had to put in the education system. That's almost... 6,000 young children that they had to put in the education system. So now you're seeing how the budget is being impacted and why the shot spotter program is being killed. I'm going to let you hear more. Um, I've 
I've demonstrated that I'm very much committed to this mission. You know, and there's an entire operation around how this mission is carried out. So I'm grateful to, to the, of, of the work from the state as well as from the county and the work that they have done and what they are committed to continuing to do. And there's an entire operational aspect to this mission um, that I have to have full consideration of because I'm, again, solely responsible for sheltering people, We're solely responsible for educating people. These are you know, big tasks. And as you know, um, from the very beginning, since I've taken office, we've deep, decompressed police stations, the airport. Um, it's a lot of work that's involved here. And the city of Chicago has um, the bulk of that responsibility. And grateful that we have partners like the state of Illinois that have helped resettle families. The county has committed to uh, ramping up its health care services at each of our sites, of, of which 27, 20 of them, 28 of them, I'm running all of them. Um, and um, we're going to continue our work to make sure that this mission is fulfilled. But, Mayor, that doesn't answer the question that there's a $70 million gap. Why did you engage with the state and the county and then refuse to commit? So this is the $70 million shortfall that's being presented between the governor and the mayor. And this is why programs have to be cut, because they have to meet their budget. They can't fall short. So pay attention. It's impacting on um, communities now. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on the impact that this has happened on Chicago's budget. Chicago, let us know. Hop in the comment section. Let us know how you feel about the shot spot. Or will you be safer? Do you feel safe for Chicago? Somebody in Chicago, let me know. Do you think this is going to make the streets worse? Because most of us, we're not from 63rd. You know, we are not from 63rd. Most of us... Yes, you see it right on your screen. We are not from 63rd, so we should be uh, have less to worry about than the people of Chicago. So citizens of Chicago, let us know. But let's hear about um, Brandon Johnson and the $70 million shortfall in their budget. Let me know your thoughts. So I'm engaging with the county and the states because that's what leaders do. I've made a commitment to collaborating with, pe with people. There are a lot of things to consider in this entire operation. It's not just financial resources. It's about beds, right? And who ultimately is going to be responsible for, 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 for the temporary shelter. I mean, remember, the state of Illinois committed to 2,000 beds back in November. And we are still working out and flushing out the details around that. Because look, this is a very comprehensive approach. So this is not about my commitment. If anybody questions my, I'll say like this, I don't believe anybody in Chicago is is questioning my commitment to this mission. Well, they are because you didn't put in the 70 million that you promised you would give them at that meeting and then walked away from it. Were you at that meeting? Wow. So the mayor, Brandon Johnson, he's going to figure out a way to deal with the budget. But again, let me know your thoughts. If the shot spotter was in your community or if you have anything like that, if it was being removed, we just want to know, is it effective? Is it going to make crime go back up? Is Chicago going to turn into the wild, wild west, which, which it once was known for? Things that make you go what, people? Chicago, hop in the comment section. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know if you need more help, because we'll surely bring more attention to it for you. Let us know, Chicago. Hop in the comment section. I'm out.